On today's episode, this strange air vehicle may be the future of heavy lift. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Sustainability in aviation is a global priority these days, but for all but short range, small payload operations like air taxis, replacing jet engines is proving to be very difficult. The physics of flight requires a lot of thrust to generate forward motion, and that's necessary for aerodynamic lift. And the energy density of fuels like kerosene can't yet be replaced by technologies such as battery electric propulsion. But what if we could disconnect the requirement for lift to carry heavy loads and leave just propulsion for forward motion? Now that problem was addressed even before the airplane was invented with airships. And until the 1930s, lighter than air transport was the only form of air travel capable of transatlantic flight. Now, hydrogen was the gas of choice for rigid airships like the Hindenburg, but its disastrous crash in 1936 effectively ended lighter than air as a viable transportation system. Now, today that's changing with a new generation of special purpose airships that use non flammable helium as the lifting gas. Now, Bradford UK based hybrid air vehicles have been working on a buoyancy based aircraft since about 2007 and has built a prototype called Airlander 10. Originally an R&D test vehicle, in 2014 the company re-engineered the vehicle for civil certification, leading to a first flight in 2016. Now being prepared for production, Airlander 10 is a large vehicle. In fact, at 302 feet in length, it's the world's largest air vehicle. Lift comes from a combination of helium buoyancy, aerodynamic lift, and vectored thrust. Projected performance reflects the possibilities of buoyant flight. A five-day airborne endurance, a 10-ton maximum payload at 4,000 nautical miles of range. Maximum altitude is 20,000 feet, and the aircraft can be configured for several purposes, such as passenger and cargo transport, as well as communications and surveillance. Now, the green credentials of the vehicle come from the nature of buoyant flight. With four combustion engines, the standard Airlander 10 will perform similar missions to comparable aircraft with 75% fewer emissions. A hybrid electric aircraft slated for 2025 will offer a 90% emissions reduction, and for fully carbon-free flight, the company expects to offer fully electric vehicles for service by 2030. Of course, certification must precede commercial operations, and HAV designs fall between standard designs for lighter-than aircraft, such as blimps, and heavier-than-air aircraft, such as fixed-wing airplanes and helicopters. Now, as a new class of aircraft, everything from inspection and maintenance to pilot training must be established from scratch and the recent completion of EU Aviation Safety Agency EASA certification basis standards means that the path to a type certificate is possible for service entry in 2025. Until this time, there were no design rules for hybrid aircraft like Airlander 10. Heavy lift, long loiter times, freedom from complex airport infrastructure, and low emissions are a powerful combination. This strange air vehicle may be one answer to the expected explosion in demand for air cargo service in the next decade. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.